Hi guys, welcome back. So today's video is about the Billions of Graves app. I have done videos in the past about the Billions of Graves website, Find a Graves website, um, the Headstone section in Family Search. I will link all those videos in the description box below. Um, but today I'm going to talk about the Billions of Graves app. I know I've talked about the website, but now I'm going to talk about the app. Um, so as you can see, this is my LDS family history church page that I have on my phone. Um, just a forewarning, I do have a droid and not an iPhone. I do believe the app will look similar and work similar in the iPhone, but don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. Um, I've never had an iPhone. Um, so first thing you'll want to do is go to your Play Store or whatever that is in the iPhone world. And we'll go in there. And then you will want to type billions of graves in the search bar. And the first thing that will pop up is billions of graves. Next is find a grave. So billion graves, that's the one we'll want. We'll click on that. Then you'll say install, and you'll install the app on your phone. I can't install because, well, I already own the app, so I can just click open. But I'm going to go back to my home page so I can show you what it looks like. So once the app is installed, you will have this little thing right here. See this one right here? This is um, what the app looks like. looks like a little grave headstone with the little birdie on it and the little location icon. That's what the Billion Graves app looks like and you'll want to click on that. So this is what the Billion Graves app looks like. Um, I know when you first open it for the first time it will have a few things of like Hey, this is how the app works. You take a picture, you put in the location of the headstone and things like that. I don't have that anymore because, well, I've already looked at the app and played around on it. Um, so before you get to this page, you'll actually need to sign into your Billions of Graves account. Billions of Graves is actually a free app slash website. And so you can connect with like your Facebook or make a new account or whatever. It is free. Um, I do believe on the website you can actually buy a premium package or pay for more access to things. I don't know if that's true for the app because because I don't pay for things, especially things I can get for free. So, um, but you will need to make an account and log in. So this is kind of their home page. So obviously if I click on the take a picture, it will bring the camera up on my phone and you'll see, you know, my desk and <laughs> me recording videos. Um, for you guys, if you click on the take a photo, you would, um, it would pull up your camera and you'd be able to take pictures of the headstone that you should be nearby. And underneath that is like find a headstone, find a cemetery, request photos, photos, dash, and settings. So. Yes, let's go down through each one. So if you want to find a headstone, you'll click find a headstone. And then you'll have to type in the person's information. So let me hurry and type an ancestor's name in. Okay, I'm just going to type Sarah Ogden. And then I'm going to type, I'm going to scroll through and find the country she was buried in. Maybe. Okay, there we go, there we go. United States, okay. And we'll choose a state. So if you've been to the Billion Graves um, website, you know that they just actually ask for a name. So it's kind of cool that on the app they're like, hey, plug in more information. Because when you're on the Billion, Billion Graves um website they just ask for a name the first go around and then you plug in more information once it does the initial search so before you can search you can plug in all this information which I think is so cool that they've done this because I hated putting in a name and then more information should be able to do it all at once 
So search. So now it's pulled up all the Sarah Ogdens for the state of Utah, and I can scroll through the list and go through all the Sarah Ogdens and try to figure out which one is my Sarah Ogden. Um, so I guess what I should have told you guys when I was searching is one of the things I don't like about um, Billions of Graves is when you search for your ancestor or a female ancestor, you need to put their married name in, not their maiden name, their married name or whatever name is on the headstone. Um, so this Sarah Jackson Ogden, it actually is, uh, the Ogden in parentheses is her maiden name. It actually has written on her headstone, the Sarah A. Jackson. So put on, so search what is on the headstone, not what is your ancestor's name. As you can also see up here at the top, there is two Sarah Ogdens with the same birth date and same death date in the same cemetery. These are actually both of my ancestor. They're actually one lady. She just happens to have two headstones and they're actually side by side from each other at the cemetery. But because of that, she actually has two pages here on Billions of Graves, which I don't like that with Billions of Graves. I wish that they had it where they connect and were like, oh, that's one Sarah, and she just happens to have two headstones. I hate how she has two different pages. So if you happen to be looking for an ancestor, A, if it's a female, make sure you put their married name in or whatever name is on the headstone. And if you don't know what that is, plug in every name that you could think of. <laughs> Um, also look for multiple headstones because there might be multiple pages for that ancestor and each page may vary in information. Which you can see right now with the two Sarahs, they do actually have very different information already. And as I go and view the pages, you'll see that they will vary in information. So you'll want to go and view both pages or as many as you can that may possibly be your ancestors. So let's view the first Sarah. So I just clicked on her name and it's brought us to her page. And at the top it has Sarah's name. It also has her birthday and her death date. And the little location icon next to her name. I believe if you click on that, it should bring up the cemetery's location in your maps, your Google Maps. So it doesn't bring it up in your Google Maps, but it does bring up a Google Map form of the cemetery and you can view it on Google Maps. So let's go back. Then underneath her name is the photo of her headstone. If they had multiple photos, I believe you could slide left and right and view the multiple photos, but I don't have that option right now. Um, you could click the photo icon to add more photos for Sarah. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't want you guys to view my photos. As we scroll down, we have more information of Sarah. We have more detail of her birth and death because her death was cut off up before. Um, and then if marriage was available, that would be there. Now we have the information on the cemetery. And if we click on the cemetery's name or the arrow next to the cemetery, it will bring us up to the cemetery page here on the Billions of Graves app. So, I just clicked on that and now I could see the cemetery page and view the photos of the cemetery or photo where there used to be more I guess not the address and then I can click on the little arrow and get directions on how to go to that cemetery view all the images for all the headstones there are 9,449 headstones um, or I can see the photo requests that they have or add headstone photos and I can click on those arrows and do that. Or I can keep scrolling down and view the cemetery website, directions, nearby cemeteries, um, and that's it. So I'm going to show you guys real quickly the so I'm going to show you guys real quickly the headstone images because I think this is actually really kind of cool. And I don't think their website do does this unless they've updated it really recently. So let's click on it. No, I don't want you to know my location. 
Let's see, now I have the Google Maps of the cemetery, but then I also have the photos. Um, but now I have like a little circles that say how many photos are there. So 100 plus, 200 plus. If we click on one, I'm going to click on this 100 plus, maybe. It's going to bring up a bunch of little dots or location icons. Now we can zoom in, see those little location icons, and then I can click on one. Be like, okay, I want to look at this headstone that's right here in the cemetery. And it will pull up the headstone. So I think it's cool because it shows you where the headstone is located on Google Maps or in the cemetery, which helps out so much when you're like, where's my ancestor's headstone in this giant cemetery? Now you can find it easily, or you could look at all these people's headstones without actually visiting the cemetery and know where they're located in the cemetery, or a rough estimate of where they're located in the cemetery. I think it's so cool and awesome. Best feature on this app so far. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go back. And they have request photos, which just is going to give you a list of the four photos that have been requested. These people may or may not have headstones, so we may or may not know if the request will be filled. Um, and then down below is you can add a request. And then you just click on that, add the information that you have of that ancestor, um, which would generally be for this cemetery, by the way. Later on, you can add one for any cemetery. But right now, this is just for the Kaysville Cemetery. I would add, be like, this is all the information I want to add. So you can go to the Kaysville Cemetery and hopefully find my ancestor's headstone and take a picture. So. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything for the Kaysville Cemetery. So let's go back to Sarah. Back arrow. So it says possible family member is uh, an Edward Ogden. And then if there was memories, I could scroll down. Can't and view her memories, but she doesn't have any. So we'll just go back to the families and show you about this Edward. So if you click on Edward or the arrow, it should take you to Edward's um, Edward's page here on the Billions of Graves Billions of Graves app. So let's click on it, and sure enough, we are now to Edward's um, headstone page, which pretty much has the same information because he's buried right next to his wife. Oh look, this is what memories looks like. We have a little story of Edward. Oh, well, kind of. There we go. There's more of a story of Edward. Oh, that's so cute. Oh man, he has lots of memories. That's cool. So, pretty much the same thing for everybody. Oh, and I'm sorry if the pages get a little blurry. My phone to computer hookup is a little slow sometimes. <laughs> So let's go back to Sarah, and let's go back to the Sarah list, and then we'll view Sarah Garrett Ogden. And I can show you the difference between Sarah Ogden and Sarah Garrett Ogden. Even though they're the same lady, they have different information. This is why it's important to view both pages. So Sarah Garrett Ogden, once again, her name's at the top, birth date, death place. Um, the little location, we can click on that and view the cemetery on Google Maps. Photo of her headstone, I would believe if she had multiple, once again, I would just be able to scroll through, but not being able to. Then Sarah's information down below, cemetery's information, and then see this Sarah doesn't have any family members or any memories. This is why you view both headstone information because this one has her middle name but doesn't have family members whereas the other one had a family member her husband so the information may vary and I, I really really hate that about this website or this app I really don't like it I wish it was like find a grave where they're like oh there's one Sarah let's put all the information about Sarah on one page she has two headstones you can view the, view the photo of both her headstones 
and all her family members, whether they're buried at the same cemetery or not. It's one of the things about billions of graves that drives me crazy. Okay. So if you want to do a new search, you just go back and change the information you have. Or you could just close the app, open the app, and go to the new headstone information. Um, and then once you change your search, so I'm going to say like Vermont, you search again, and it will pull up a new list. So that's just how you change the search. You just hit the back arrow, or you come to here to the home page and say, I want to find a headstone. So if you want to find a cemetery, you click the find the cemetery section. And I'm going to say deny my location. Then I think I'm going to have to screw, zoom out. So yeah, I had to zoom out. And now it's showing me the North America continent. Then we're going to zoom in on the location you are looking for a cemetery. So I'm going to zoom in on Utah. And be like, where are some cemeteries in Utah? Preferably like Utah County. So normally it would give you a little icon saying, hey, there's cemeteries here. And you would click on the icon and it would take you, well, first it would show you a photo of the cemetery. And then you can click on it again and it would take you to the cemetery page here on um, the Billions of Graves website. But I'm having technical difficulties and it's not pulling up any cemeteries for the state of Utah. So we have a bunch. So, um, yeah. Up here in the top, we have little icon things that we can do. Um, so, this first one with the dot, three dots and the three lines. Um, if you click on that, it will give you a list of cemeteries instead of the map view of cemeteries. And then you can click on the cemetery and it will take you to the cemetery page. The little plus mark, um, you can add a cemetery if you don't find one on the map. And you know there's one there, you can add one. Um, so you would add like all the information such as cemetery's name, address, location, any notes, and then you would add that in. I've never added a cemetery, so I don't know exactly how that works. Then if you're searching for a certain cemetery, certain cemetery in a certain location, you can actually type the location in up here. So you click on that and it'll pull up this and you go, okay, cemetery's name or location, and I'll put like Utah, go search, and it will search cemeteries in Utah. At least it should, but having technical difficulties in section today, and I apologize. And one day I'm gonna have to update this video again when the map section is working. <laughs> I've been trying to do this video for like an hour now, and the map thing is so not working. I'm going on vacation, so I have to pre-record this video, and a little frustrated <laughs> that I'm having technical difficulties today. Oh! Oh my gosh, it just worked! Oh my gosh! Okay, wait, 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 wait. No, let me show you. Okay. That is so cool, it just worked! Maybe it just takes a few minutes. And I'm just impatient. Oh! Okay. So now you can see where all the cemeteries are at in Utah County. And you can see there's two different kinds. One is green and one is orange. I don't know what they mean right now, but we'll find out. So let's click on this green one right here in the top corner. And it says it's the Holiday Memorial Park. And they actually have pictures. And we can click on it. And it's now taking us to the cemetery page. And we can view the cemetery photo, the address, how many headstones they have. Um, well, images of headstones they have, requests, um, add a head, headstone photo, and nearby, um, nearby cemeteries. So, we've already shown and talked about this, but this is kind of cool, now that it's working. 
So let's view one of these orange ones. I'm pretty sure what the orange ones mean is ones that have requests. So let's click on one of the orange ones and find out. I clicked on that one and it says Washington Lane Memorial Park. And they actually do have 13 um, photo requests. So we can click on that. And it now has brought us to the cemetery information page. And they have 13 photo requests. And we can click on those and view those requests that people have put in. So, and then if you want to, because they're open to the public, you um, fill in these requests that people have. I believe you fill in a request by just like clicking on it and then like saying accept the request and driving to location and adding the photo. Never done it before. So. <laughs> So we have one more type that I want to show you, and that is blue cemeteries. So we have blue cemeteries, and if you click on those, I do believe they mean ones that don't have like any photos. So let me click on this blue one. So it's Alta Cemetery. It does look like they have zero information. So Alta Cemetery, there's location. Yep, sure enough, they have no headstones and no photo requests. So, that's kind of sad. But those are ones that you really want to put all your dedication and help to. Granted, they're probably like really hard cemeteries to get, get to, and they probably don't have like really any information to add about a headstone. So. So this is the, um, map page so this is the map page here on the billions of graves app and let's go back to the home page and view the other sections once again here is the home page and next is photo request so we can click on that say deny because i don't want you to know my location um now that i've denied my location it has brought us back to the maps and it is showing us where people have requested photos to be taken. Um, so let's click on like this 13. And it says there's 13 photo requests for these Wash Wasatch Lawn Memorial Park. Um, so you could go to that location and fill in the 13 photo requests, or you can click on like this eight one and fill out the eight photo requests for the Larkin Sunset Gardens. Um, that's what the photo request section is, is it's just a map letting you know where people are requesting photos to be taken, and you can go and fill out those requests um, if you so choose to. So I'm going to go back to the home page, photos. So after you've taken photos, you can view them here. I haven't taken any photos, so this section's kind of I don't really know how it works. Um, yeah, so that's photo section. Um, next is dashboard. And this is just like the statistics uh, and pretty much things you've seen on the home page. Um, how many people you've helped, how many picture, pictures you have uploaded, um, transcriptions. Then, um, and then everything down below is pretty much what we've seen on the home page of taking photos and finding headstones and finding cemeteries and people who have requested photos and photos you've uploaded, settings. So that's kind of weird how they have it all right here and then section dash and seeing it again. Kind of weird, but it's not my app. And then settings, click on settings and you can change the settings for the app. <laughs> and this is how you sign out, in case you wanted to know. So this is Billions of Graves app. Um, I hope this video was helpful and you guys learned a whole bunch about Billions of Graves and how to you know, find your ancestors' headstones. Whether you want to go out into the world and look at your ancestors' headstone or you want to sit on the couch and 
look at your ancestor's headstone and get information about your ancestor. Um, or if you guys want to go out there in the world and help others get photos of their ancestors headstones um, or anything else about this app so if you guys have any questions please comment below I will try to get back to you as soon as I can um, if you guys have any suggestions on anything else I should film please also comment below and I hope you guys all have a beautiful week. Bye.